Hi everyone and welcome to this special interview on uh, one of the last published paper in the New England Journal about the DAPA-TAVI study. And today with us we have the first author of this paper. So welcome Sergio Reposera Rubin. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, Sergio. We are happy to have you with us in order to understand a little bit more about this paper. So, um, which is the need behind the, the idea of this paper? Well, uh, patients with aortic stenosis undergoing TAVI, uh, after TAVI, they have high rates of HF, and this is especially relevant in the first year. And uh, in this context, SGLT2 inhibitors have been shown to reduce the risk of HF, but uh, patients uh, included in the trials of SGLT2 inhibitors exclude patients with valvular heart disease or patients undergoing uh, recent valvular intervention. So we don't have evidence in this context. Moreover, patients undergoing TARI tend to be older and patients over 80 years usually are underrepresented in, in clinical trials with SGLT2 inhibitors. So we need evidence in this context in, in order to reduce the risk of HF after TAVI and also to, pro, to, to, to promote or to provide evidence by, about SGLT2 inhibitors in this setting. So definitely you randomized your population to receive the dapagliflozin after the TAVI procedure. And um, I saw that this population was uh, quite uh, a good one in terms of age, because there were older patients, more than 80 uh, in the mean age. Uh, there were diabetes, some, there were renal insufficiency, even if not lower than 25. And half percent of this population were women. So not so bad. Which are the results that you had uh, from this randomization? Uh, yes, uh, our, our trial is very pragmatic trial, so this is a very, very uh, uh, a population very similar to real life patients. Uh, that the, the mean age was 82 years, and a lot of patients uh, with uh, comorbidities. So this is all patients that we saw in real in in, in real life, and uh, the, the 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 main finding of of our uh, trial that was in this population, we found that the risk of HF was significantly reduced with the dapagliflozin. So we have 28% lower rate of the primary endpoint, that the primary endpoint was all cost death and a worsening HF. And it was uh, mainly, it was mainly driven by the reduction in HF. There was no benefit in terms of uh, cardiovascular death or, or all-cause death, but there was an important reduction in HF. So definitely the heart function is better even after TAVI if the patients are treated with dapagliflozin. So your population was special because you included patients with um, an ejection fraction around less 40%. Am I right? Yes, yes, yes. The, 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 17% of patients have a, 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 a reduced fraction below 40%. Okay. So my question is now, all these patients were um, even screened for the anti-pro-BMP value, right? In our trial, it's not mandatory. Okay, it was not all mandatory. Patients, all patients with HF prior TAVI, but uh, uh, we, it, it was independently of the level of NP, probably Because according to the uh, extremely interesting result of this treatment in patients undergoing TAVI, my question was, would you be happy to use dapagliflozin in all Kammer TAVI patients since every TAVI patient in the majority of cases of severe aortic stenosis present with a very high anti-pro-BMP and so there is already a sort of decompensation ongoing. Uh, I think that in all patients with TAVI and high risk of HF, like patients with high uh, pro-BMP or patients with prior HF, in all those patients with high risk of HF, I think that it's mandatory to use an SGLT2 inhibitor. If the patient has not high risk of HF, 
with our trial in this moment, to be honest, we cannot say that it's for all patients after COVID. But for all patients with high risk of, of HF, I think that this is mandatory. So what we can assume from your very, very interesting trial is that the treatment of patients that have an high risk of having a um, heart failure after the treatment of the aortic valve, maybe the dapagliposine will be a standard and a gold therapy in the future. We will see which is the impact of your trial on our daily uh, practice. And we thank you very much for giving us this insight from the paper. Thank, thank you. you very much, everybody. Bye-bye.